chess.com. Uh, I'm presenting another entry into my member post their best games of chess thread and uh, this was submitted by uh, Dzola83 and people are submitting all kinds of games uh, some, some of them are submitting their best, some are submitting games that uh, uh, they want help in and really I'll accept any game. I prefer not a blitz game uh, because all all the impulsive of thinking going this is a turn based game of a move every three days so that fits the bill but I'm gonna make a few statements in here about uh, turn based chess or online chess essentially this is postal chess uh, which was played uh, has been played over uh, for over a hundred years and we used to play by postcard you had to keep meticulous records and keep track of the time spent, fill out the postcard, mail it, and so forth, and wait a long time for a day, we'll te or for a move to come back. Well, technology has now replaced this. Uh, when I got out of postal chess, I was playing by card and things like chess by fax, and were just coming into vogue, and uh, now it's been replaced. If uh, All the main servers let you play, uh, our, our main postal chess organizations let you play uh, over the internet and the the nice thing about this is that uh, postal transmission time is instant you know even domestically in the United, United States depending on where the person lived it could take five days to get the move to him and then he stops and doesn't reply for two or three days and he, before you know it two weeks have gone by before you get a move and a lot of you say well that's too long well no it's not too long you're just spoiled and I'm taking this time in this video to, to just explain this for people that watch it uh, it, it postal chess has changed it it's it's a game where you have time and and postal chess is the only reason I became a chess master okay this is how I worked and if you look at my video lesson one I accentuate it's critical that you play and I've suggested you take three hours a move but this was the, under the advice of uh, a former world's correspondence champion at a when you're playing at a high level if you have too many games going it's time to get rid of rid of most of them and stop and focus on the games you have at hand because uh, this game could have gone either way and we'll see as we get there and it's it's simple neither side is taking their time and thinking you're, you're it's not like playing a tournament game where it just so happens that you're online at the same time as your opponent and you make a move and then he sees it and he looks at it and then he sends a move back and you know maybe thinks for five seconds maybe things for two minutes whatever and, and suddenly before you know it uh, you have played ten moves in a day and chances are you're gonna play impulsive moves you're not gonna learn one thing about analysis you're just gonna play a game of chess forget about it move on to the next one and repeat the same mistakes no postal chess is the way to develop the one thing that will improve your ability and that's your analytical power you have to stop and analyze you have to work out variations and let's let's just go through this and see how it comes out okay and I'm pretty sure this game was over in just a few days okay uh, whereas had I played this game uh, let's see it goes 28 moves this could have taken me 10 months you know it could have and if I'm playing European it could have taken uh, two or three years uh, but anyway even with these moves Okay, so the Nimbus of each defense, hooray, this is, this is my opening. This is the one I feasted on. When I started uh, heavy into master class postal chess in 1986, I knew absolutely nothing about the Nimbus of each defense, but I wanted to play something that my opponent wouldn't be as well prepared for, and I had uh, a lot of uh, books on it, the classic being Hugh Meyer's uh, version, uh, published circa 1985. Uh, there was not a little bit more about... Uh, the Nimsevich in print, Capitianic had a book in print, and Tim Harding had one from about 1980. Uh, I still have both those copies, uh, including the original 1986 one or 85 one. It's for sale. I don't. I'm not ready to sell it yet. Make me an offer. Uh, it, uh, I'm gonna hold out for a good price on it because these things are hard to come by. I had the 93 edition, which I've already sold. And I have the current one, the most current one, 1995, which is not for sale. It's my copy, and there will not be another one issued by Hugh Myers because he passed away. Uh, I don't know. There's another book uh, advocating Knight C6 as black against any first move that has some work on the Nimzovich. I have not seen it. That's in print. 
Um, if you want a book on the Nimzovich, you can find that. Or, but try to get your hands, if you're serious about this opening, to get your hands on the Hugh Myers version from 1995. I do not know where you can get a copy. Okay, but uh, I have the 1986 one. I still have a copy of it. Anyway, let's let's move on. So now I've uh, I have a video series about the Nimzovich defense. It's it's in the video lessons. I'm sorry. Yeah, the the video lessons forums. There's a there's a whole bunch of videos, and I cover a number of lines, the main lines, because uh, this is this this is the same line I use. D5. White's main moves, and they're covered are either E5 or Knight C3, and and discussion of those is beyond the scope of this particular video, but there's stuff on it in my, <coughs> excuse me, in 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 that uh, thread. There's a number of videos. Okay, and this one is covered too. And to me, this is the one of the easiest ones to meet. Black just gets a very free game as long as he's careful. Okay, so, and all the sidelines, they're pretty much covered in those videos. I do give, uh, one move I, I normally play is e5. This is the this is my move of preference, but I have experimented with the move that Black plays, and I can't get anyone to go into the line. And I've covered the whole line. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit of it, and it, it comes up right here. Uh, there is a interesting sacrifice that Black can play, and I've not been able to get anyone to go into it. So I've not I have not yet tested it myself. White Black missed an opportunity. The idea is, is bishop takes, you give up the queen. Okay, both sides are giving up their queen. And I think it's critical, if I recall, to go to d8. And there's a lot of analysis on this in, in one video. Uh, it covers the main lines, and I did not cover all of the analysis that's in Hugh Meyer's book. Uh, there's a lot of tricky stuff. Both sides can go wrong in a hurry in this variation. And... But it's something I've been wanting to test, and I've been un unable to do it. Eventually, uh, Black is going to win that uh, that knight on a8. He'll give it up for a pawn or something. Uh, but in uh, the position is basically considered unclear, and, and in effect needs testing. And that's if White plays it correctly. So there's a lot of poison in this. Uh, but there's a video on it if you want to explore it more. Okay, so let's go, so let's go back. Uh, what Black does is play Queen H5, and I stopped and looked up in, in Meyer's book, and he, and this is just a sideline. There's not much analysis on it all, and going into it is pretty much beyond the scope of this video, and uh, because you don't want to just have variation after variation after variation demonstrated for you, you're not going to learn. Suffice it to say that in a lot of these variations where the uh, Queen is coming out to D5. In some of them, it's not good to go to h5. And which positions are those? Well, it's beyond the scope of this video. We'll be here all day. But apparently, this is one that Black can get or Black can get away with and and play it. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much leaving opening theory right about here, and uh, we get this move. Now, this has a threat on c7. I believe Black now makes a mistake. What? Uh, Black needs to deal with the with the weakness on c7, and what he plays is is rook c8. But thematic in this type of position, and it, I guess it would have to require some analysis, uh, is simply to castle. Now, it's very thematic that Black castles queenside in this uh, particular exchange variation of the Nimzovich. He's going to castle queenside quite a bit. Uh, what happens from here? Well, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, uh, it, again, they, they they could go beyond the scope of this video, but this is now where I teach you how to uh, more examples of how to analyze. You consider casting as a candidate move. Now you start looking for well, what what can what can White do that'll that'll mess me up? So you you might consider candidate move. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Come back here. Thank you. Okay, H three. That's a possible candidate move. What else is a candidate move here? Knight e5. Okay, those those have points to them. Uh, another candidate move might be bishop b5. Maybe white wants to double up those pawns. Well, one drawback with bishop b5 is maybe black will just double up white's pawns. Okay, he could he could do that. Um, if 
h3, this kind of puts the question to this bishop, uh, what's it going to do? If it comes back, you have to start analyzing moves like knight e5, uh, attacking the queen, and putting a threat on f7, okay? So, you know, maybe castling is not good. Maybe, but many, then again, maybe this whole thing, this refutes the queen to h5 idea. The queen might have been better to go to a5 or to have gone into the sacrificial line I showed in the beginning. So, let's just examine this for a moment. I, I, I can't promise we're going to find the best line because, as I've said, I don't uh, sit and, and prepare every single possibility. Most of your authors and chess coaches want to be exhaustive and show everything perfectly. They're wasting your time. You're wasting your time watching them or listening to them or reading their books because uh, you have to learn to discover things on your own. And this is how we do it. Now, the question is to the bishop. What do we do with it? Okay, what do we what do we put it? Can it moves bishop f5? Well, we might run into g5, g4. Okay, maybe we're going to put it on e6 to protect this f7 square that could be loose. But it, in any case, wherever we move it, there's going to be a discovery coming up. So let's let's just put it on e6 for the fun of it. Now, uh, White can't get away with d5, but look what he can do. Uh, knight e5. Okay, now. Where, where does the black queen go? That's a good question. Where does it go? Uh, it's got two squares, it seems to me, h4 and f5. Let's go to, uh, let's go to f5. Okay, now we're on the bishop. So the bishop's, bishop's got to be dealt with. Um, let's put it back on h2, just as a sample line. You know, it's, it could go to g3. It could back up on the same diagonal, but let's put it there. Now, uh, Black might have, well, actually, he doesn't have to move it. Black and uh, white can play knight takes c6. I see that's another possibility. And now he's on the rook, okay? And if we play queen takes bishop, knight takes d8, and white has won some material. So white, uh, black may have to stop and play b takes c6, okay? So now the bishop comes back. Now we'll deal with the bishop. We'll come back here. And I, I think white's come out of this okay. Uh, he's got the bishop pair, and uh, white, black's got uh, some weak pawns in front of his king. So it could be that black is forced in this position to simply take uh, take this knight. Now white takes back, and now we've got a problem. The queen's under attack, and this knight's under attack. So maybe now we we can play queen f5. Okay, maybe we can get get away with this move now. Uh, because now, if if uh, if black takes on c6, white can take back on f4. So let's preserve let's preserve the bishop. Uh, let's put it on for the fun of it. Let's put it on g3 this time. Now we we don't want double pawns. We want to avoid those at any price. Uh, what can we do to avoid that? Well, we can't play knight d5 because our pawn isn't on e6 yet. So maybe that exposes the 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 move knight f6 is being flawed uh, if it was if well no not really because the knight wouldn't be on f6 with the option of going to d5 but we got to find a home for this knight uh, where are we going to put it uh, knight b4 that way we're, we we want to come back to uh, to d5 okay now let's play a developing move for white okay now we want a blockade we're moving a piece a lot we're but this, who, you know, this may work out just fine for white. Uh, now c4, and look at these bishops raking, raking the uh, king position. Uh, looks to me like uh, white's come out of this just fine. He's got the bishop pair and and a, and a couple, of pretty, and those bishops are pretty pretty. Okay, so let, that's kind of how we 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 analyze. We sit here and we just look, try to find the the best move that we can for both sides. And le and developing moves. So, uh, if you use developing moves and moves that follow some kind of a plan, you'll eventually find the way. Now, naturally, there's so many variations there beyond the scope, but that's how you start to attack a position and tear it to shreds. And with a three-day time time control, if you're only playing, uh, say, six games, uh, you got three days if you need to sit and work on the game. 
uh, a day, five hours, whatever it takes. Try to find the best move. Look up, get the books, look them up, play o play over the ideas. This is not blitz chess, and you're giving your and you're going to develop your now analytical powers so much easier if you uh, if you uh, stop and analyze. So, you know, maybe castling's a mistake. Uh, I don't know. It could be that it exposes the flaw with this queen eight, queen h5. The queen would have been better served going to a5, and then you don't run into some uh, tactical shots of a discovery on the queen, and don't have to give up the bishop pair. And and then again, it goes back to maybe it's better to go in, as I said, go into that line. So let's see what happened, and we'll uh, analyze a little further. So now black no longer has the option to castle queenside. But you know, that's okay. This move doesn't uh, uh, mean the black's going to lose. It does not mean that at all. It's just that uh, it's kind of anti-thematic with what black tries to tries to achieve in this opening. So that's fine. We're on our own. Okay, now now he does something smart. He develops, gets, gets his bishop out. Well, he's did a lot of smart things here. We'll see. I'm uh, queen d2. And now bishop d6. This this is good. It frees the uh, rook from having to defend that pawn on, on, on c7. And white now decides that he wants to castle queenside. And once again, this is one of those positions black will probably want to castle kingside. And it's one of those positions that uh, white would want to launch uh, a pawn storm against the black king. But you know what? I forgot something. Let me back up. Uh, something I was thinking of is, whoops, I didn't want to back up that far. Uh, what if what if white plays h3 right now? Okay, what if? And, and you, the idea is to combine with some of these uh, other ideas that we looked at. And this is often how I approach something. I try to get the same line with but with a different move, save a tempo. In other words, instead of white doing uh, what he uh, what he did, try this. Uh, what what are, where does uh, where does black put the bishop? I was putting it on e6, right? And then we run into this discovery again. Now we didn't castle, so the knight is no longer gonna going to uh, be attacking a rook. So there's a little difference. Okay, now we can come attack this, and then knight takes doesn't work because we just take the bishop. So let's save the bishop, put it on h2 this time, just for the fun of it. Now black's able to play knight takes here, okay, so that white can't double the pawns. And how does how does white want to retake with the pawn or with the bishop? Um, an analyzing both is beyond the scope of this. I'm just trying to make a point. Let's tempo. Uh, let's do. Let's gain a tempo on the knight. Uh, no, you can't do. Yeah, you can do that. Now knight d7. Now this pawn's loose. Uh, queen d4. You know, it's, it's getting interesting. C5. Um, now we can play queen e3. We could play queen e4 and offer a queen trade, but we don't need to. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, black needs to finish his development. Okay, since he's put the bishop on e6, he's committed to that. Let's castle queenside because that's often what white does. Wait, it's black's move. G6, castle queenside. Now we have another threat on the pawn. Okay, so this time we're going to stop and and hold on to it. And now black castles and oh, this this move may be a problem. It could have been sitting there for a couple moves too. Where are you going to put the queen? Well, you're not. So back to the drawing board, you know, maybe black's got to find some kind of improvement somewhere. But this is how you learn. You you start looking at these possibilities uh, so that you find the answer before you accidentally play into into it. Okay, so let's get back to where, we, where I wanted to be. Uh, I just wanted to show another line there, give an idea how to analyze a game. And this is, to me, this is very enjoyable to sit and analyze uh, analyze a position out. Okay, so what? Uh, I, I don't like the way they do the PGN, so I'm just going to uh, repost it. You know, it's one flaw with 
when you go into sub variations at chess.com with their game window it moves everything around and it's kind of hard to find the line you want to be into so I'll just replace it and uh, start over and I don't have those lines okay so anyway bishop comes out now black uh, white castled and uh, black plays knight d5 and, and this is a good move it's it's a square that black has under under his control and uh, so it's a good place to put it and it's good to get the queen off that diagonal it's 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 dang this this diagonal I'm talking about it's danger dangerous because black may have to cede the bishop pair uh, and he may have or, or at least the advantage of a bishop or knight looks like the dark square bishops could be coming off and the queen is nice and centralized there plus uh, if black had two moves in this position in a row he, he wins with queen a2 and, and checkmate so the queen is well posted on d5 okay so black uh, or white takes on d6 now white black could play his wishing zug here he could uh, he's going to come down down here anyway soon uh, but he could play it right now uh, is it any good you know it's, uh, this queen could come out to f4 so that the king has a flight square uh, then on doesn't have to go there it can also come out he, out here it's, it's just something to analyze okay so but taking is nothing wrong with taking and here I think uh, white kind of starts to lose thread of what's going on uh, he's actually helped the black position to a great degree uh, I've said earlier you know putting the rook on c8 was a mistake now Bl white has opened up the that file for the rook and uh, black is going to have a winning game here in just a move or two you'll see okay so bishop g6 now knight a4 and now here's here's that or h4 now here's that move threatens mate in one white needs to move his queen he picks this square and uh it was at this point that that uh actually wait there's something i missed okay queen a2 is fine but black had a black had a win right here um uh, it's not easy to see um uh, but it, it it it's it's there. I'll, I'll kind of show you the main ideas, it, or you want to try to f uh, solve it on your own. Pause the video. Okay, the win black has is knight knight a5. Okay, this has because of all the tactics, this has an immediate threat. The immediate threat is to play knight b3 check, winning the queen. That's the immediate threat. So how does white deal with it? Well, white can try. There's several ways to try. One is to play, is to get the queen the heck out of there. Let let's put the queen here for the sake of argument. But the drawback now is, uh, well, well, actually, I wanted to show you this one. This is kind of pretty. Let's put the queen here. Okay. The drawback here is black has this beautiful uh, combination. Let me think. How did that go? Yeah. Here. Check. And now double check and the only way to get out of double check is to move the king and look at that pretty checkmate it was there for the seeing black had time you know he had three days you have three days every time you get a move and black had three days to find this and I'm not saying this would have happened but uh, I found it in a few minutes okay because I recognize you know all the all the tactical possibilities so uh, moving the queen up here I can let black analyze that it, it more or less runs into similar problems you still have rook takes check here but what happens is uh, you're still going to go into p3 now the pawn is pinned a different way and you're on the queen and uh, you know basically white has no defense here uh, the queen's under attack uh, c2 is going to fall and you know we can take with a rook we can take with the bishop uh you know game over game set match uh, black is crushing and there's a lot of diff there's some different ideas in here i think the only uh pretend let's, let's get down to what happened okay so he didn't find knight a5 he, fi he 
But this is a good move still. Black is still winning this. Okay, 95 was just had just so many pretty lines in it. Okay, so black or white needs to move the queen. Now black missed another uh, winning move here. I'll pause the video. Okay, here it is. Knight e7. This guards the rook and attacks the queen and, and increases the pressure on c2. And if white stops and gives check, where do you put the king? Okay, you don't want to go to f8 because black's able to get rid of this powerful bishop with, with check. You simply slide the king over to d8. He's safe as can be right there on d8. Black ha uh, white has nothing. The queen has to move and c2 is going to fall. You know, well, you got a spy check, but that doesn't lead to anything. Uh, just b6, and, you know, white's in trouble. <laughs> he has no move. The, got a th the threat is mate and one. Uh, rook takes c2 is checkmate, and, and the queen is loose. So what's, what's, black gonna, what's white going to do? Well, he's not. He's, he's losing. Okay, so unfortunately, when he missed this, well, let's get forward. There's that th the movie plays is okay. Whoops, he didn't play that. He has that PGN at work. It likes to make the sub variation the main line. Okay, he castled, and now now White has a, a glimmer of hope here. He can he can hang on, and he gets rid of that powerful bishop. And this is a good way to recapture. Uh, it activates the rook. That's a good move. And here's suddenly uh, he, now here he gives a note. Oops, uh, this looks bad for me. I need time to analyze. <coughs> okay, so the game's about even now. Black did have uh, a resource here that he didn't didn't see. Uh, he makes the comment that a move the move he did play is the best move, but it but it isn't. Okay, what do you think the best move is here? It's a tricky position. And, it's, and here, I'll show it to you. If you want to pause the video, go ahead. Okay, the key move is to play knight b4. This takes advantage of the fact that uh, uh, the bishop on c4 is pinned. Okay, so if, if uh, bishop takes a2, well, it's a little more than that. You, you, if bishop takes a2, you, you can take the queen and then... Uh, or take the bishop with check and have a fork and then get the queen back, okay? And and uh, black will come out of that uh, okay. And so it's not the fact that the bishop's pinned, but it. But if if uh, white decides to take the knight in either way, now we've got another attacker on that bishop, so uh, we can get rid of it and save our queen. But unfortunately, we're not. Uh, black doesn't have a winning position anymore. The game's uh, basically a toss up. Okay, so knight knight there was the the, the correct move. Uh, knight takes d4 is not the correct move. Uh, White now has a winning game, but he's gonna um, he's gonna misplay it. So, you know, I think we can say it's safe to say that White has played too quickly as well, and therefore White has been has been given a golden chance and uh, didn't or golden opportunity and didn't take his take advantage of it. The idea behind knight d4 is similar to the knight b4 line. Uh, if bishop takes a2, you want to fork the queen. Well, you know what? Uh, I think black, I think white can do it here. How does, how does it, and that's what he should do. Just take, just take the queen. And I think that uh, white wins with this because uh, if for the moment, black is down a whole queen. How, how, how are you going to get it back? If you play rook takes c6, after b takes c6, your knight's loose, and you're down a whole rook. So there's only this move, and then the king comes up, and you make go to d2. Let's, let's go ahead and put him on d2. So this, well, doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll stop and pick this up. <laughs> king has to go in the corner. Now what, what, what's white want to do? Uh, he can take the rook, and he's still on the knight. Or he can take the knight, and he's a piece up. Let's take the rook. Let's get let's get greedy. Let's take the rook. Now now white's a rook up. Well, black can take a rook. 
So maybe maybe being greedy isn't the right way. Uh, let's let's just take the night and be done with it. White's a piece up. Black loses and uh, black uh, white rest his move. It, it's just that simple. He did he didn't analyze. Uh, and and black didn't analyze deep enough. Maybe black saw this and thought that was the best he could get. But you know, coming back to that position, knight b4, it, it's not an easy move to see. You know, it's one of those things where we say to ourselves, "I can't put my knight there." He takes it. Well, well, so we get to take on c4 if he takes it, right? Yeah, absolutely right. So sometimes uh, we we forget. To, to look at moves that we can't move. You know, International Master Jeremy Sillman says, if you can always uh, look at the moves that you would re normally reject, your rating will go up at least 100 points. Okay, he said it. I didn't. But I, uh, somebody pointed that out to me. I've believed the same thing all along. So how do you find moves like this? I've, I've mentioned this. One way is to stop and look. The, the hardest way is to sit and look at every legal move. Uh, I have a feeding master friend that would do that from time to time. He would examine every legal move uh, just to see if there was something uh, wild there. Uh, but the other way is to analyze forcing moves. What are forcing moves? Uh, anytime you can make a capture, that's certainly a forcing move. What can black capture here? Well, he can capture this, he can capture that, and he can do what he captured, capture that. Well, I think it's easy to see the queen moves don't work. And it could have led him to find knight d4, so that's a start. What are the threats black can make? Well, um, or what checks does he have? Well, queen a, a1 check, and the king, king comes up on our queen strap, so that doesn't seem to work. So we got to find some other kind of threat. What can we attack? Um, and it turned out the only thing we could attack was this bishop. Okay, We defend the queen and, and, and rely on a tactic. So eventually... Uh, through process of elimination, Black could have found the move if he would examine moves that normally uh, he wouldn't think he could make. Okay, so let's see what happened. Knight takes. Oh, no, there, he's, that's not what he played. He, oh, there goes the dang PGN again. Okay, White took on d4 with the rook. Okay, that's uh, that's not the right move. Okay, so what happens next? Uh, Black get, now has uh, an escape hatch for his queen, and the queen escapes over to h1 because White has uh, unprotected that rook. You know he's allowed the skewer. Now look what's happened. Um, Black is now ahead material. A rook for a bishop. It's that simple. Okay, so he grabs this pawn back. Maybe he thinks he's getting somewhere. And he takes here, but unfortunately, Black has uh, a very. Even though Black's down a piece, he's got a uh, a very active queen and rook, and and he just finishes him off nicely here. Rook takes check, and suddenly the White King is in serious trouble. Uh, king d3, and we check here, and now the queen is won for the rook. We check here. Now white makes a, I don't know if it's a mistake or not, but this just allows queen c6 check. And the bishop on c8 is lost, and black has a winning game. So it's a good game. You know, most of the moves black played were good. It's just you missed a few moves here and there. And that can be corrected if you just take your time, sit down, relax. Nobody's holding a gun to your head and saying, hey, he moved. You have to move. Well, the gun to your head is in a tournament game when your clock is running. You have 20 minutes on your clock and you have to make 10 moves. Well, that's if you don't make your 10 moves in 20 minutes, you're going to lose on time. Well, this is three days. If, if you cut your game load down, you can play, uh, uh, you can take, take the hour or two necessary to, to find, find the best move. You know, if, if I play a tournament game, I play basically uh, 22, 2300 level for the whole game. If I play a postal game, I play 24, 2500 level uh, simply because I take my time. And anybody that doesn't take their time against me 
Uh, they're toast. That's why my record here at chess.com is, is so good. Uh, everyone's playing blitz chess against me. Not everyone, but most of them. And they're making blunders. And, and give me 20 minutes, I'll, I'll find the move. I'll find the best move. Uh, sometimes I need longer. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, when I'm playing, if I'm, I got a lot of my re my victories off low-rated players. So I was working up, working my rating up. Uh, they'd play a reasonable game for a while, and all of a sudden, they'd violate some kind of opening principle or middle game principle or ending uh, motive. And I'd look at that and say, well, there's got to be a win here. Let's work it out. And I'd run through some lines, analyze just like I've been showing how to analyze here. And I would prove to my satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt that that line won. And I'd play, make a record of my notes, play the move, and wait for his reply. And a few moves later, uh, you know, he he would either lose based on the variations I had already seen, or he'd find a new way to lose. Okay, so that concludes this game. I hope it's very helpful. It's not meant to be critical. I was once uh, very weak at chess myself. I'm not saying you're weak or any of you are weak. I was just weaker than I was now, and I had to learn. And the whole purpose of my course is I've picked out what worked and what didn't. And don't waste time on the things that don't work or take forever. Focus on learning to analyze, and, and online chess will do that for you. But you have to make the commitment, okay? You want to get better. Oh, there it goes again. It's back. You want to get better, you work, and you analyze. And I guarantee that you'll not only enjoy, you enjoy the game, you're going to win more if you analyze because the mistakes are... They're all making them. You can see them. How many did White make here? <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for your time. I'll get this uploaded and get ready for them to make the next one. Take care.